We know that the ADHD gut microbiome is different from neurotypicals. And if you didn't know that and you want to learn about it, I do have a video on that topic you can go watch. Since it's different, let's talk about the six ways we can actually help specifically ADHD guts through an ADHD lens. So the biggest findings we see is that butyrate production, which is a short chain fatty acid that helps with inflammation, is essentially decreased in people with ADHD. That means we want to do things that are going to improve butyrate production. So the six things we can do to help that using food are whole plants and variety, prebiotics, probiotics, resistant starch, being hydrated, and then reducing ultra processed foods when able. Now let's talk about what these mean and some really easy strategies you can apply today. So the first is whole plant foods in variety. So the more diverse your fiber intake, the more diverse your gut microbiome. The more diverse your gut microbiome, the lower inflammation you tend to have. Now, different types of food feed different types of bacteria. So sugar feeds a bacteria called candida, which you might've heard in the wellness space a lot. Fiber is the thing that feeds the bacteria that we really love and they love us when we eat fiber. The goal here is to eat 10 different plants a day. And I know that sounds a little scary, but trust me, it's not. For example, you can make a burrito that has 10 different plants in it. You could have rice, beans, flour from the tortilla, tomatoes, cilantro, lime, peppers, and then maybe on the side you have some strawberries and some green beans. So that's 10 right there. And it's just one meal. I like to make it a game. How many different things can I add to this food? So mac and cheese, I will add peas or edamame. I'll add spinach. I've never added beans before, and honestly, I don't know if I will, but you could. The key is to not aim for perfect, just for variety and adventure. Even rotating through three different vegetables or whole grains each week will make a big difference. Now, I know for some of us with ADHD, even just the eating part of eating is really hard. That's my issue, honestly. So I do have a free ebook that goes through five different behavioral hacks. I'll have that in the description. It doesn't sign you up for my email list, but you do have the option to sign up for it. And I do recommend because honestly, it's one of the best, I think. And it's not scammy, I promise. You literally just get new ADHD nutrition research every single week and it's super fun. All right, now for number two, that is including prebiotic rich foods. So prebiotics are the fibers that your body can't digest but your gut bacteria love them. If you wanna Google it, you can search for inulin. That's one of the easiest ones. And it's found in foods like onions, garlic, leeks, green bananas, oats, asparagus, and beans. Basically, you're gonna hear me say all the time that beans are one of the best foods you can eat for ADHD, even though it sucks to hear. And I've been personally working on my bean intake. But yeah, prebiotics specifically fuel those butyrate producing bacteria. If this sounds like a lot, just think about soup. Next time you make soup, add plenty of onions, garlic, and lentils. So for number three, we're gonna talk about probiotics. So probiotic foods are foods that contain already these gut bacteria. Now fermented foods are not going to colonize your gut permanently, but they can support sore chain fatty acid production indirectly by interacting with your already existing bacteria. So probiotic foods are fermented foods. So think yogurt, kefir, some sauerkrauts, some pickles, kimchi, miso, and tempa. So next time you make a protein shake, use Greek yogurt. The goal is to have one fermented food every single day. I personally have either kefir or yogurt, just because it's the easiest for me to do. So number four is focus on resistant starch versus regular starch. So resistant starch is a type of carbohydrate that behaves more like fiber. You don't digest it, but your gut bacteria do. Resistant starch happens when you cool down your starches. So think cold pasta salad, refrigerated rice you turn into fried rice, or your leftovers. So resistant starch acts like a slow release meal for your gut bacteria. It ferments in the colon by getting eaten by specific bacteria, which unfortunately that one is reduced in people with ADHD. You can go watch that video I talked about before. And then when it's fermented, it can turn into butyrate through different types of bacteria as well. So some really easy ways to make this work is storing your bread in the fridge, eating that leftover lasagna that's about to go bad, or simply waiting 10 minutes before eating your baked potato. You can also microwave any of these and it'll do a similar job. Obviously it's not gonna be optimal, but I'd rather you eat that instead of not eat it. And then for number five, stay consistently hydrated. I know this is really hard for a lot of you. Some of you, not an issue. You probably have four drinks on your desk right now, but water helps fiber do its job. So without it, your digestion slows down and the fermentation patterns can shift in less helpful ways. If drinking enough water is an issue for you, I really recommend making a rule for yourself to always have a glass of water with a meal or a snack. If you don't like the flavor of water, totally fine to add flavoring to it. If it's just hard to drink, personally, bringing it up to my mouth is one of the hardest things for me. And I know that sounds kind of stupid to say out loud, but yeah, 
that is my barrier to drinking water. Partially because it's like too much effort, other half is because I spill a lot. It's a whole thing. But I call these micro barriers. So micro barriers are things that for neurotypicals really aren't a thing. But for people with ADHD, they are the difference between doing something and not doing something. So identifying what is your micro barrier is going to help make sure that you can actually start drinking water. And then finally, number six is reducing ultra processed foods if you're able. I'm having this at the end because honestly, I don't like having people take out any foods, not until they have started to do their actual dietary recommendations for a long period of time. The reason for this is because for a lot of people, Ultra processed foods are their safe foods. The good thing is when we start to do more of those first five steps, our desire for ultra processed foods is going to decrease because we are improving our gut microbiome already toward a gut that favors more of those fibrous whole foods versus the gut that favors more of those sugar fat foods. Now you don't have to go completely sugar free and honestly, I don't recommend that because I think sugar is a great tool. But I will say here that a diet high in ultra processed foods, so think packaged snacks, sugary drinks, fast food, they can disrupt the microbial balance and it can lower short chain fatty acid like butyrate production. Another thing here is protein intake can also reduce our cravings for these more ultra processed foods. Usually when we crave an ultra processed food, it's typically because we don't have enough energy. Therefore, our brain is craving the quickest form of energy with the lowest amount of effort. Staying on top of your protein and fiber intake is really going to help reduce those cravings for those processed foods simply because your body actually finally has the energy it's looking for. And the last thing I want to say is that supporting your gut health with ADHD is not supposed to be an overnight haul. Sustainable change happens from starting small and then building on success, not chasing perfection or trying to reinvent our entire lives. Remember the last time you tried to rearrange your entire house within a day? and then you ended up exhausted with a messier home than you started with. Yeah, same vibe here. If we exhaust ourselves, then we're gonna make our gut microbiome worse due to stress. Just pick one or two adjustments that feel doable to you right now. Not five, just one or two potentially. Maybe it's buying a frozen stir fry instead of a pizza. Maybe it's adding ground flaxseed to your pancakes. Maybe it's drinking water with your lunch. Once that feels automatic, then we can add something else. Over time, these small changes can create a microbiome environment that is going to better support your brain. Now, if you're looking for a community, I do have a free and a paid community. One is over on Discord and one's over on Patreon. When you join the Patreon, you get early access to all of this content, AKA you're the first to know about all this. You also get worksheets, eBooks, and then for the highest tier, you also get monthly group coaching. Now, wherever you land, I'm happy to see you, happy to talk to you, here for your questions, and in general, grateful for you. Now, if you made it to the end of this video, I'm really proud of you. And here's a few videos that you might find interesting.